Say you love me. Say you don't. Just give me something so I can move on. Pull me closer or push me away. Let me know if we'll be okay. Cause I can't stand another moment of you playing with my mind. I'm so tired and never know it. So spell it out. Cause I won't stay awake till morning. I won't stay another night. In late July of 2023, my brother Jerry and I took a trip to Montana to go fly fishing. We were flying into Billings, Montana to fish the waters flowing out of the Beartooth Mountain Range, an area in the central southern part of the state above Yellowstone National Park. As we left the airport, we were immediately impressed with the beautiful rimrock formations and abundance of rivers that flow through this part of the state. We were staying at the Montana Fly Fishing Lodge, located about one hour southwest of Billings. Lincoln and Judy are the owners and hosts of this amazing place. The property includes accommodations in the lodge as well as five safari tent cabins located along East Rosebud Creek. These tent cabins include a full bathroom with showers as well as air conditioning and other amenities with fly fishing just steps away from your cabin. Arriving in the late afternoon, we were treated to live music and our first meal at the lodge, consisting of these amazing tomahawk steaks. We got a chance to meet the great people staying at the lodge, some of whom had just arrived and others who had been there several days. After dinner, we settled into a relaxing evening before our first day on the river. Day one began with a great breakfast provided by the lodge and then we were headed out to the lower Yellowstone River. This river drains from Lake Yellowstone and Yellowstone National Park and is 678 miles long, the longest river without a dam within the lower 48 states. It drops almost two miles in elevation before reaching the confluence with the Missouri River to the northeast. Our river guide Chris got the boat and gear ready and before long we were on our way down the river. Okay, I'm reeling them in. Keep reeling. Come on, buddy. Come back. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, this is the biggest one I've caught in the last seven days. Yeah. yeah. Love it, man. Soon after we were on the river, I caught my first nice brown trout of the day. Beautiful rainbow. Little rainbow. Around midday, we stopped for lunch along a shady spot on the river bank before heading downriver to complete our float trip for the day. Coolest eats of the day, buddy. That fish chasing that with his mouth. Yes, wasn't it? Did you see that? That yes, was bad. I did. Now yeah. I set that up. Good man. <laughs>
Spending all day in the hot sun is not the easiest thing to do, but my 80-year-old brother Jerry, a Vietnam War vet, made it look easy and caught some amazing trout on this first day in Montana. Nice. Beautiful. We had a great time on the water and caught some good-sized browns and rainbows. Chris did an awesome job as our river guide and we made plans to hook up with him on the last day of our trip on the Bighorn River. Back at the lodge, we were treated to more live music and an amazing dinner and talked with the guests about each other's fishing adventures for the day. For day two on the river, the plan was to go to the nearby Stillwater River. Despite its name, the Stillwater River has significant whitewater, large drops, rocks, and a very swift current. It is anything but still. This section of river, which can be pretty shallow with lots of boulders, is much more suited to rubber style rafts for fly fishing. All right, well, this is day two, and I am with Jay with the Montana Fly Fishing Lodge, and we are on the Stillwater River, upper middle-ish. Upper middle -ish section, yeah. the swallow area. Yep. Very beautiful section of river today. So my brother Jerry's not feeling up to par uh, today, so it's just going to be myself. And uh, man, we're looking forward to a good day today. The, there's not a lot of people here today fishing on the river, so hopefully Jay and myself have it all to ourselves. So stay tuned. We'll show you what's happening next. There are a couple of legends on how the Stillwater got its name. The first is that a fur trapper, or early settler making the first maps in the area, decided to have a bit of fun with the name Stillwater, which the river clearly is not. My preference is for the second legend, which has the early settlers in the area asking the Crow Indians to find the source of the river, thinking there must be a lake higher up in the Beartooth Range. The story goes that they came back telling the settlers there was no still water, meaning a lake as the source of the river, and that name stayed with the river to this day. This was a day filled with catching fish on a fairly consistent basis, including rainbows, browns, and whitefish. Although whitefish are not considered very highly by some who fish these rivers, they are the only species actually native to these waters and have an absolute right to be here. They are actually quite fun to catch and put up a terrific fight. I ended up catching at least a dozen fish for the day. Nothing huge, but consistent catching all day long. Jay was an awesome guide and a huge help in getting me on the fish. Day three began with an amazing Huevos Rancheros breakfast and then starting our day where we had come out of the still water on day two. Starting off with a hopper dropper system, just kind of a good way to start the day and do a little prospecting. Yep. Um, kind of like yesterday, we started with hopper dropper, caught a few fish on the dropper, started eating the hopper, so we put on two dry flies, started really eating the hopper, so we cut off the extra dry fly and just stuck with a single hopper because it'll kind of, when you just got a single hopper on there, it'll drift a lot better and it kind of makes them have to eat it. You don't give them that nymph choice. Right. And then nymph wise, I just got some, you know, tungsten jig nymphs. One's a soft hackle pheasant tail basically with some chartreuse to it, just looks buggy and they like it. And the other one's a little, Super simplistic caddis pupa, just heavy and gets down and they seem to kind of like it. Just all in black and green and a couple neat colors on there just to keep it, keep it kind of all across the board of what sort of caddis colors we got in this river. <laughs> Sounds good, yeah. all right. I think this is a little trout. Another little brown, I think. Whoa, Nelly! 
Good job. It did not take long for Jay to find a deep pool loaded with fish, and he anchored the raft for several minutes to allow us to fish this spot. Oh, there's some private bridges like this around. Perfect. Fish Got on. It. White fish again, huh? Sooner or later we'll start getting some trout. Once they start rising a little better. Good Lord, is this place stacked with ladies. Day three on the Stillwater was giving us the same good luck as the day before. We were catching multiple trout and whitefish and enjoying our last day on this scenic river. All right, everyone. Well, we are at the end of the day on the lower middle still water. Yep, yep. All right, and uh, man, Jay, you've been fantastic today, buddy. Pleasure fishing with you yeah, guys. Yeah, Jerry? Okay. What it's do you think, great. Jerry? I think it's been great. Yeah, good time today, huh? About 12, 13 fish. Yep, we had a great time, guys. It's just a gorgeous river. I never realized the still water was this beautiful. It is an amazingly beautiful river. Um, we just caught so many fish today. Honestly, we lost count. Um, Browns, rainbows, and uh, um, white fish. So yeah, just lost track. But uh, Jay's dries been, and nymphs. Yeah, yeah, all, all <laughs> everything sorts. Everything we put in there. They yeah, everything later. we put in there. So yeah, it's just been a great day. So again, thank you, Jay and uh, Montana Fly Fishing Lodge. We've had a great time on our third day. One more left to go. So stay tuned. All right, well, it's the end of the day. We're heading towards our exit ramp, which apparently has a good possibility of us missing. But knowing Jay, our expert river guide here, he will not miss it, right, Jay? Let's hope, let's hope that let's hope that stays strong. All right. <laughs> Haven't so, missed it yet, but... You can, see where that, you can see where that tree is there leaning? That's our exit. Oh, I got it. Ah, made it. Good job, dude. Good job. <laughs> and so ended our last day on the Stillwater River. Back at the lodge, we were treated to another great dinner, and we were excited to see what our last day on the Bighorn River would bring. Day four began with a beautiful sunrise over the lodge property. We were excited to fish the Bighorn River and Chris picked us up and we were on our way to the Fort Smith area of Montana. This river is 461 miles long and was named in 1805 by a fur trader for the bighorn sheep he saw along its banks as he explored the area. Day four has begun and we are on the Bighorn River with our best guide, Chris. Yes, sir. Gorilla on the Bighorn, baby. My brother Jerry's with us. 
We're on the Bighorn River. We are on the Bighorn. The uh, dam's right behind us, which is the start of the Bighorn River. And uh, we're ready to get going here today. It's our last day in Montana. We're excited. So we're going to see how today goes, but it's looking good. There, Jared, Jared. You got him. He's still on it. He's gone. No, you're good now. He's fighting downstream. It's a good fish, buddy. Let him run. Oh, yeah. Big rainbow. Get that camera on. Here, Sean. Double. Double. Beauty. Let me get a gander at that when you get a beauty. chance, Chris. What a beautiful fish. Oh, man. What, what do you think, Wood? Nice. Oh, 16, 15? 17 inch rainbow. 15. Never had that happen. Huh. They're pros here, buddy. Yeah, here, Sean. Yeah. Oh, ah, damn. Yep, he got off too. Some bitch was leaving the country, too. <laughs> yeah. That one, that one was big. That was a big one. It felt very big. Damn it. Hang on that, you fucker. Keep reeling, keep reeling, good man. Keep man, he's coming. Yeah. As far as I can go. Nice. First brown on the first brown on the Bighorn River. Beautiful brown trout. Nice. Good. Whoa, he's wow, he's jumping like crazy. Our day on the Bighorn went much like the day on the Lower Yellowstone. We did not catch huge amounts of fish, but the ones we did catch more than made up for it. On this day, the Bighorn lived up to its name and reputation. Right, guys well we just finished day four our last day on the river and uh man chris thanks again buddy you're, you're very right welcome man my, my pleasure us. yeah we, good, good meeting you guys yeah. and i hope you guys had a good time and it was we a, did. a yeah. lot of fun we fishing had with a you great guys. time yeah, so i'm glad the Super. montana fly fishing lodge has been so good to us and chris vanilla grill outdoors awesome dude and uh man you really killed it for us today we had thank a great you very time. much yeah. i so, appreciate that thanks hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video stay tuned there'll be more coming Thanks for watching. Arriving back at the lodge, we enjoyed one last meal from our wonderful hosts, Lincoln and Judy, before flying back home the next morning. Before leaving, I asked Lincoln to tell me a little bit about the lodge and how this amazing place came to be. All right, guys. Well, um, this is my last day at the Montana Fly Fishing Lodge, uh, southwest of Billings, Montana. We're in the Yellowstone River Basin area. Man, I had no idea where this lodge is located, um, the amount of different rivers you can fly fish around uh, this immediate area within 45 minutes to an hour of the lodge. Um, this is my last day. I've actually had four solid days of fishing on various rivers, the Stillwater, Lower Yellowstone, and the Bighorn. Had an amazing time. I mean, this is probably the best fly fishing trip I've ever had. Um, caught multiple trout, browns, and rainbows. Uh, just a fantastic trip. I'm here with Lincoln um, and his wife Judy also run this lodge. 
Um, they are just fantastic hosts. And Lincoln, I cannot thank you enough, sir. It's been a pleasure to meet you. It's been you. a pleasure meeting you yeah, and your brother. So, and you guys just are, they're incredible hosts. They have incredible food. Um, just, I mean, the nicest people you can imagine to run a lodge like this. And uh, it's, it's a lot of work. I can tell it's not an easy <laughs> job. But they make it look easy and they make you feel welcome. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just, I had a great time. Um, why don't you just tell me, Lincoln, a little bit about the lodge? And Yeah, we, uh, you know, the property has uh, been in the family since the 1940s. And mm -hmm. so I, uh, I built the lodge from 97 to 2000. It was the only building on the property um, up until that time, really. Um, uh, built it as the main residence uh, for our family at the time and uh, you know uh, about 15 years ago now we decided to uh, you know we decided to make it available to other people to enjoy because it was sitting empty we had moved to Bozeman at the time and um, you know uh, one thing led to another I've got friends in the fly fishing industry and they were, I was hooking them up with people we'd have come and visit us and, um, you know, they, bar none, they would always say, you know, man, you need to market directly to fly fishermen. This is a great place, great location, a quiet corner of Montana where, you know, west of Bozeman and such is, uh, you get the throngs of fishermen, but all these streams, blue ribbon trout streams running off the uh, east slopes of the Abstroke Beartooth Mountains are, you know, all blue ribbon trout streams. Yeah, so it's, it's world class trout fishing in yeah. this area for sure. And uh, man, the staff you have here as well, as mm -hmm. well as you and Judy, I mean, it's just fantastic. You guys do an amazing job. Yeah. So um, if well, people want to book a so. Yeah, it's certainly. And if people want to book a trip with you, how would they, they find well, it? Well, it's easy enough to just call us. Our contact information is on the website, but we do have a, a booking form that comes up. Uh, it's identified, a little button on the website um, that uh, we capture some information from you, your dates, number of people, and some of your interests, etc. And um, there are our availability calendars right online to uh, see if that syncs up with the dates you're looking for. Yeah. Um, you know, we and we do that's to book a book with us directly. We just we, that's the process we have. Um, but we do have uh, we're Orvis endorsed, and so their travel agency and um, the Fly Shop of California, Frontiers Travel, and a couple of others uh, help people get connected with us also. Yeah. Yeah, not only do they have the main lodge here you can stay in, they have at least five tent cabins, yep, correct? Yeah, five safari tents. Yeah, right on a creek, is it the East Rosebud? Yep, East Rosebud. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's beautiful. The, the creek goes between the cabins, and it's just, it's an incredible location. There's a pond behind the camera here. You guys have already seen all this footage, really, but um, yeah, we just had a great time, and again, thank you. Yep, Appreciate thank you. Appreciate it, sir. We had a great time. Hope to be back soon. Well, great. It was great having you. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Say